Yo, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to another Knicks episode on the Knicks Jets Etc. podcast. And it's just, it's just me now. It's just me and you, baby. We are solo here um, on the on the new Knicks uh, direction here. We're going with the Knicks Jets Etc. podcast. Make sure you tune in on the YouTube. We are taking a, a, a different direction here with the with the video side of things. It's going to be a lot of visuals. Uh, some highlights play in the background. I'll be able to talk about some stats here, but I'm a diehard Knicks fan. Uh, we'll still have guests on here. I'm still going to uh, these games. I'm going to a bunch of away games still coming up here uh, next month. We are still the exclusive Knicks podcast for the daily Knicks.com for fan sided. Uh, you can catch us there. You can catch us on the Knicks comma jets comma ETC period YouTube. Again, um, we're going to be uh, doing a couple uh, different things here with the video side of things. Uh, let us know what you think. Maybe we're going to start going live soon as well. So we'll be able to interact on the fly. Uh, so that'll be better on, uh, you know, especially on a, on a, on a night like tonight. Um, the Knicks are really showing out against the best teams in the league, and what a nice turn! Uh, so today we'll uh, we'll talk about the, the last couple of games. Uh, we'll especially get to this Knicks Celtics game that just went down on prime time TNT. Knicks showing out. Who are these Knicks team? Man, who is this Knicks team? So we'll we'll, we'll do um, we'll talk All Stars a little bit uh, as the. The starters were announced today. We'll talk trade deadline just a little bit, but we'll, most importantly, we get into this upcoming schedule because it feels like this uh, trade deadline and the All Star games right around the corner, which leaves about a third of the season left after just a couple of months. So hold on to your uh, hold on to your chairs because things are about to get interesting for this New York Knicks team. We'll start off here. Uh, man, since the last time we spoke, the Knicks went on a tough streak, right? We went through the Toronto game at home, Washington, that overtime loss, tough at home versus Washington. We had the whole KP stuff. Man, I miss Mark Berman. Uh, we would have had a, a full... <laughs> synopsis um, about KP's uh, departure, especially after that little mini press conference. Lost in Atlanta. Lost in Toronto because Nick Nurse just owns us. We had that one win we were super excited about. Just killed us here twice. But against the studs, we, we showed out. Let's talk about this at-home Versus Cleveland, Donovan Mitchell, I guess he's coming home here. Um, this was a big game for the Knicks, and I know I'm I know I'm solo uh, on the on the pod here on the audio, but it's, at least in the visual, we'll have I'm be hanging out with all my friends here, hanging out with the squad. They really showed out against Cleveland. Very impressive down the stretch. Shocked that they were able to hold up at the end, if I'm being honest with you. I mean, Hartenstein had his best game of his Knicks career by far. I really loved his post-game press conference, talking about how he's been letting the city down, the fans down. A little bit of self-awareness goes such a long way, right? He knows the role he has to step into with Mitch Robinson down. I mean, even James Dolan, the owner today on Fox, coming out talking about how Mitch Robinson is a big loss and how we just kind of have to stay above water until after the All-Star break, until he comes back. Everybody knows this is a, a big spot here for Hardenstein and, you know, thankfully Jericho Sims getting some minutes. But against the Cavs, and they have a tall order. They got Mobley. They got Jared Allen. They got Kevin Love off the bench. They got some big guys who... A feast against the Knicks uh, for the most part. 
And we did well, of course, led by Julius Randle, who has been just uh, the, the, the star that the, the, the Knicks have been longing for, right? We, we had him two years ago, and then he was gone in the wind, and we all forgot about it, and now he's back, man. This Randle, 36 points, 13 rebounds, 8 for 12 from 3, just absolutely killing it. Hartenstein, though. I mean, how many excuses did Donovan Mitchell give at the end of that for uh, for not being able to finish on that last play? What did he say? His calves, his, his calves cramped up. His legs cramped up. Everything happened to him. Uh, he had a stroke midway through <laughs> on that last play. But, I mean, objectively speaking, Harnstein made a good play on the ball. Again, nine rebounds, four points, nothing crazy on the, on the stat sheet. But he had a fantastic game. R.J. Barrett, all right, 5 for 12, all right, 16 points, just middle of the road, rocking it. Grimes went 2 for 7, that was kind of tough. Everyone was a little off, uh, but we we, we we held through. 50% from 3, 51.5% from 3. Yo, Julius Randle going 8 for 12 it was bonkers. Huh? And R.J. going 3 for 5 from 3 was kind of nice versus the Cavs. We held up. Um, Mitchell didn't drop 50. He dropped 24, right? Like that that, that that's the name of the game here. It's defense. Right? Rubio didn't kill us like he like he might have one day. Mobley didn't go crazy on us. He's been having an off year, but Mitchell won six for 14 from three. They shot 36% from three. Not not so great. Eleven for sixteen from free throws. They were they missed a, a couple of key free throws. Under 70%. Not great. We shot 66%. Also not great. Speaking of free throws, let's jump into uh, the Celtics game. We're going to try something new, too. Uh, nothing different on the audio, but again, uh, if you're on the visual, kind of, let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this game. The Celtics and the Knicks uh, pinned against each other in rivalry week, which... I guess is an honor for uh, for the Knicks <laughs> at some point here because I mean Boston has been the best team in the NBA by I won't say by far best team in the East by far even through the Nets winning streaks uh, I, I struggled to say the NBA because the Nuggets have just been killing it and Memphis has been on a tear not as of late but they'll be back Golden State has always has stretches but they've been terrible these days. Um, Philly right now uh, on a nice little stretch here, but Boston, man, Boston is is really the uh, Milwaukee had a stretch. Now they came back to earth. Now maybe they're gonna get a streak going. But Boston has has been the the best team in hockey and the best team in basketball uh, all season long. This is a big statement game for us. TNT prime time mentioned a couple times. But what was most impressive, again, Randall, 37 points in 37 minutes. Not so great from three this time, five for 13, which is the most impressive part here, that he was able to pull it together while he was bad from three. Usually, a five for 13 night from three for Randall means he just had, I mean, just lost us the game. Terrible turnovers, stuff of that nature. What's really important here for the Knicks against the Celtics team was the slow start. I mean, what was, re- what was really interesting in the beginning of this season, we w- the Knicks were starting off hot, especially Randall, first quarter Randall, first quarter Knicks, and then we were slowing down at the end. It seems at this point we've turned some weird little corner here where we, we start off slow and then we end up finally closing out. I mean, there were second half adjustments. Uh, Sims really stepped it up. 
doesn't show on the stat sheet. I mean, I guess the rebounds show up on the stat sheet. I mean, as we're watching these highlights here, I mean, the Knicks are 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 playing team basketball in a game they have no business winning. Eight point underdogs. But listen, if Grimes, you know, Grimes went one for one for six from three. The whole team went thirteen for thirty-eight. Gave up so many second chance points. We didn't look great. But we hit our free throws. I mean, that was the original transition here. We we hit our free throws today. Jalen Brown missed two. I couldn't believe that. I, that, I mean, that was luck. But shout out to Emmanuel quickly. He's really coming into his own on this team. He, I mean, I feel like he's untouchable at this point. I feel like he can't go anywhere. I feel like, it was, you know, there was that little mini rumor about a first round pick for Emmanuel quickly. That has to be, that has to be gone. There's no way we can be doing that anymore. He was pivotal today. Sims, pivotal. Well, especially Mitch, I don't want to say injury prone, but he's getting injured every year. So, you know, it is what it is there. Nick's playing close games versus Celtics in meaningful games here, especially when the Celtics are, 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 are really trying to hold off the nets with KD getting uh, healthy. The 76ers, we have Embiid doing degeneration X suck it uh, all over the place, which is kind of weird. The Knicks have to stay afloat uh, uh, until, until Mitch comes back, which really makes me ponder if – Miles Turner might come down here just to kind of supplement uh, with Miss Robinson. But we just can't lose Sims. So we'll see how that goes. Can I just talk about my man RJ for a second? He gets to the basket when we need him to. He just is so frustrating to watch, man. Even that six for eighteen today is so forgiving. And that's not great. And it's so that's forgiving. That six for eighteen. That three at the end was huge. Right? In overtime, that was huge. We needed that. But I'm starting to feel like RJ Barrett might be on the trading block. I really do. He of course, it has to be for a superstar, right? Like, I'm not – listen, I hate Sean. I know you can, he's my, my boy. He's going to start, you know, he start freaking out about how I'm slandering RJ. Listen, if RJ's – and he has the poison pill contract. I already know. But listen, if somebody like Devin Booker is officially on the table, especially with the Suns maybe moving on uh, with, the, with the GM, ownership, all, I mean, definitely moving on with ownership. Chris Paul, not it. DeAndre Ayton, just regret, but they had to do it because they had to match the contract in restricted free agency. Obi Toppin and 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 and, and RJ Barrett. I'm 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 starting to I'm starting to come around to the fact that they may be on the way out. And I'm not going to right now go through, uh, you know, the trade machine. But I know that Jay Crowder and Devin Booker work for like Fournier and McBride and Obi and RJ. Like that's all, that'll all work out money wise. So it just depends if the Suns are ready to move on, if they, you know, what they think about this year. But don't get me wrong. I, I, I love I love Obi. I mean, he's going into his last year. I mean, and RJ's poison pill contract is about to start. Obi doesn't get any burn. He's not he's gonna be behind Randall forever here. There's no point even talking about it anymore. I mean, he got 16 minutes today. That's amazing. He's creeping up there. Plus 19. What more can you ask from the guy? But I just feel like he's gonna want a bigger role before he gets paid. And RJ, I mean, he's he's so inconsistent. He has nice little streaks, and then he has nice little bad streaks. 
But sometimes the slumps get really slumpy. <laughs> like, but then you know he'll go in a couple games. He'll have like twenty five points in a couple games in a row, thirty here. I just hope it translates to some wins. I'm ready to win now. I, I know that sounds crazy. I know no one wants to hear that. But the Knicks are making this weird turn in the schedule right now where they were originally winning all the games that they were supposed to and losing all the games against the good teams. Now things are kind of things are kind of switching. So we'll see how that goes. Huge win versus the Celtics in overtime. Huge close win versus the Cavs. And you know what? I'm really starting to trust this team. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> I, I Trust me, I know. But I'm really starting to trust them. That home win versus Cleveland, is may, maybe we're going to start winning at home. We're getting lucky here against Brooklyn coming up here on Saturday, 530, because KD's not there. KD owns us. <laughs> Owns us more than Nick Nerds owns us. So we kind of have a chance against Brooklyn, even though they've been really good. And we don't have size now to combat. Nick Claxton's good. Kyrie. It's going to be a very good game, but maybe we could be Brooklyn in the Brooklyn Brigade <laughs> um, Saturday. Tuesday, we got LeBron at home. He's going to be trying to drop 60, I'm sure. The Lakers stink. Of course, AD will be back for that, so that'll be a battle. LeBron always shows out in the Garden. I hate that he did that. That his water bottle flip literally is literally lives rent free in my head. Then we got Miami at home Thursday. Clippers at home Saturday. Philly at home Sunday. Nice little stretch here. We're kind of let's call the Brooklyn Nets at home, <laughs> just for. Uh, just for all intents and purposes here. We got a nice little five game home home stretch coming up here. But really tough teams. Brooklyn, Lakers, Heat, Clippers, Philadelphia 76ers. We're really going to find out what this Knicks team's all about. In my opinion, worst case scenario. Worst case scenario. We get to 500 back to 500. Meaning we go one and four. I think that's the worst case scenario here with the stretch. And we're back to 500. Everybody is firing the whole team. But in reality, I don't even think we'd move that much in the standings. Right now, we're seventh. We're a half game back from the Heat at six, right? Hopefully, that's the one game that we win in this, you know, doomsday scenario. And we're only three games away from the Nets and the Cavs. Right, so maybe we, if we are able to beat the Nets here, it's going to make a big difference for us. We beat the Heat, it's going to make a big difference for us. And even if we're, even if we carelessly drop the Lakers game, the Clippers game, because you know it's their only home game, it's their only away game in the Garden the whole year. And then the Philly game, they've been hot. You know what I mean? Two, you know, two games on the weekend, back to back. Let's get. They're going to be difficult, but if we just at least for the very, at the very 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 least just take the Brooklyn Miami, we'll be we'll be fine in the standings. What is that? We'll be twenty nine and twenty six. No problem. We we'll might even jump up a spot in that case. I'm gonna go with. Oh man. I really want a Brooklyn win. I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to go with a Brooklyn win. Man, I want to beat the Lakers so bad. <sighs> Nets and then the Lakers back to back is so annoying. Oh. I'm going to be keeping track of my picks. Because, of course, I want to win every game. That's, you know, that's not a question. Man. All right, let's go with a loss versus the Lakers. 
Win at home. Win at home in Brooklyn slash in Barclay Center. Lose versus the Lakers. Beat Miami. Beat L.A. Clippers. Lose to Philadelphia. Even though I really hope, honest to God, that the yeah, yeah, Brooklyn, Miami, and 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 the Clippers is the win. The Lakers and Philly will be the loss. But speaking of, last thing here, we got to talk about the All Stars. We had, we had, I mean, honestly, I feel like it's kind of an honor for the Knicks to be playing the Celtics on the day that they released the All Stars, and uh, we didn't get made fun of. Like we're we're doing something here, and we beat the Celtics, the best team. I mean, again, very nice win here. The question is, is Randall and Brunson gonna get? Are they going to get their own perspective bids into the All-Star game? It's going to be a tough one. Uh, they have a lot of guys ahead of them. They both, on merit, deserve it. It's just going to depend that there's room for them, right? Uh, KD said he's going to he's going to be participating. Uh, so I'm not sure if uh, he'll have an alternate there. Brunson has some uh, some big point guards in the East uh, ahead of him. He has a he has a his work cut out. I'm not sure if they'll be able to get ahead in the Eastern Conference to be able to uh, get some spot. I hope, hopefully, they do though. We'll get uh, more into it a little bit. I think the um, we'll get some clarity uh, next week into what everyone uh, what they're really thinking. But man, they really they really deserve it. That's about it for this next episode. We're going to be keeping it a little short and tight. Nice win in Cleveland. Nice, nice win at home versus Cleveland. Nice win at Boston. Team is coming together. I'm a little worried about the trade deadline coming up. OG Ananobi. Miles Turner, as always. Where's oh, where's going to happen with Obi? What's going to happen with Cam Reddish? What's going to happen with D Rose? Is Caruso coming? There's lots of lots of things to lots of things to discuss here. For right now, we got the squad, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be rocking with these next episodes for now. We're gonna start having guests on, talk about um, some pertinent games coming up at the end but yeah let us know what let us know uh, what you think of this episode let us know what you think of uh just some visuals that we got going on here let us know what we can do better but yeah i'm excited to really get into thick of things here uh we're just we're really just getting rolling on this uh, new format i just needed to get an episode out here uh, after this boston game just too hyped uh just two games in a row here just first the juggernaut to the east we're killing now. We got Brooklyn coming up. I mean, this is this is gonna be a, re- a nice nice statement home stretch here until uh, Super Bowl week. Uh, should be fun. Should be fun. All right. You know what it is. Knicks comma Jets comma etc. Period. Check us out on YouTube. We also have at Winning Picks Weekly there where we have the AFC NFC Championship gambling bets with my co-host Greg for the Jets episodes and also Winning Picks Weekly. Hit us up on with a comment or a five-star rating, preferably on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google Play. And that's about it. Let's go Knicks.